Number one, on a country road. I know that some people claim that the scariest things are the things that you don't see, and some others feel that it's a bunch of bull, and frightening things are scarier when you can see them. I sort of fall somewhere in between. When you don't see anything, there's a chance nothing was there at all. When you see something and can't tell what it actually was, then you know something was there, just not what. This happened one night after I'd been at my cousin's house for way too late. Yeah, we were drinking a bit, and I got a little drunk. And the conversation was great, and before I knew it, it was two o'clock in the morning. All of us were way too drunk to drive. I could have just stayed on my cousin's couch, however, I had medication that I had to take every night before bed. So it was too dangerous for me to try and sleep over. The walk home would be a long walk along a long country road with few residences on it. But I was drunk, feeling pretty good about myself, and decided I would be fine trying to make my way home. It could take me nearly two hours to get there too. I set out and began regretting it right away by the time I got to the end of my cousin's driveway. It was a pretty long driveway. I already felt alone, and I began feeling scared. I was feeling so scared, actually, that the alcohol was not enough to keep me brave. I thought about just walking back to the house and risking not taking my med that night. But then, I also knew my cousin would make fun of me for being scared. I decided I didn't want to deal with that. I knew there was probably nothing really to be scared of. So I went on my way, and I regretted it every step I took. To paint a picture of what it was like that night, it was a bit chilly outside, but not cold. A jacket was more than enough to keep me warm. There was a warm breeze in the air, and when it blew, it whistled through the trees. Occasionally, when the moon would peek out from behind the clouds, it would quickly shine through the trees, creating some pretty amazing and freaky looking shadows. I put my hands in my pockets and continued on, nearly in each step, wanting to turn around and go back to the house, but knowing it would be useless to do that. When the wind wasn't blowing, I started hearing sounds coming from the right side of the road. That was the denser forested area. It sounded like someone was walking around in there. I heard branches moving, leaves rustling, and even the occasional twig breaking. Each sound scared me a little but I did my best to be rational. I knew I was just drunk and scared to be as alone as I was with so little light. I was finding patterns in the noises from the wind that weren't really patterns. It was rational and it may have sounded scary, but I knew that I wasn't really in any danger at all. In spite of myself, I froze. I heard a shrill and blood-curdling scream coming from far off the right side of the road. The moon was behind the clouds, and it was so extra dark at the exact wrong moment. I don't know how long I stood there, just looking into the forest like a freaking idiot. I guess I was trying to decide whether or not I should go into the woods and try to help whoever just screamed, which would have been the decent thing to do. 
or run home like a little bitch, which would have been the smart thing to do. I kept listening, waiting to see if I would hear another sound. I listened for a scream, a rustling of the leaves, anything. I was previously hearing all sorts of noises, but now I wasn't hearing anything substantial. I don't know how long I stood there looking, wondering what to do. The air felt a lot warmer suddenly too. I felt like I should try and help, but I couldn't. When the wind went dead, I realized that I couldn't be a real help. I turned and began walking back toward home. I could always call the police when I got home. I walked as fast as I could this time, all in all, thinking there was someone behind me, or someone following me, but in the woods. As I was walking along, I heard a really loud noise behind me. Looking behind me, I at first noticed that I didn't get so far away that I couldn't see where I was. And as I looked back, I saw a large, dark figure emerging from the woods. I couldn't see it well since it was dark, but it was such a large person. And I just knew he had something to do with that scream that I heard. I don't know if he saw me. I didn't want to know. All I knew was that scream and large shadowy figure of a guy are two things that didn't add up to anything good. I turned and rather than walk fast, I took off running as fast as I could down that road. I was still somewhat drunk and I was never a good runner. So I was wheezing pretty quickly and I began getting these running stomach cramps, but I didn't stop until I got home, where I promptly threw up on the porch. I called the police, but I never found out if anything happened. My cousin didn't believe me, and everyone wrote me off as just being drunk and scared, but I know what I heard, and I know what I saw coming out of the trees that night. I lived alone and I was scared to be in the house in the dark for weeks. Number 2. The Dark Man My younger brother Bobby used to have quite the imagination. In fact, nowadays, he is a moderately successful writer. When he was younger, he used to come up with these most amazing stories. Well, they seem more amazing to me now that I am older. When I was younger, I really found it to be pretty annoying. He was always coming up with something weird. No one really took him seriously. I was up late watching movies when I was 13 years old. My parents weren't too strict about sending us to bed on weekends. While I was lying there, I heard Bobby coming down the stairs. He pulled on my shirt and I tried to shoo him away, but when he told me, there's a big, dark man standing in the backyard, I felt my heart jolt. I asked him to show me. We crept into the kitchen, which was in the back of the house, and I looked into the backyard. I didn't see anyone out there. I was convinced that it was just Bobby's imagination running away with him again. I tried to send him to bed again, but he was too scared to go. So I went ahead and let him hang out in the living room with me. He fell asleep pretty quickly, and I took him to bed right before I went myself. I put the whole incident with the supposed dark man out of my mind. I didn't hear about it again until the following weekend. It was a pretty similar situation too. Bobby came up to me and told me that he saw the dark man again. This time 
he watched the dark man creep into the side yard. There was really no way to see the side yard from inside the house, unless I went into my parents' room. I wasn't about to do that. However, I was all but convinced that the dark man was just a figment of his imagination, so I told him to go ahead and wait in the living room. I got my shoes on, and I went out into the backyard. I wasn't scared, but I did find myself getting a little nervous about the chance that Bobby may have really seen something. However, I checked all around the yard. I looked in the front, the side, and the back. I didn't see anything. I considered checking the old metal shed in the backyard, but at that point, I really didn't believe anything was really going on. I went back in the house and put his mind at ease. He was fine and once again fell asleep in the living room with me. For a little while, this became a bit of a regular thing for him. I caught on that there was no dark man. Bobby had found a way to stay up late on weekends and I had fallen for it. I didn't mind. He wasn't obnoxious or anything, and he always fell asleep pretty quickly. Nothing really seemed weird after that second night. That was, until my dad asked me about some tools of his that had gone missing. He had kept them out in the shed and didn't use them often. He thought maybe I'd use them or something, and I hadn't. It was then that the idea of the dark man came back to me. However, this still wasn't enough for me to really think that there was any problem. My dad didn't keep his shed locked, so any kid who wanted money for drugs or something could have easily broken in there and stole some and sold them. It wasn't a major concern for me. This had to be over a month after Bobby had first reported seeing the dark man outside. It was another weekend, and for the first time in a while, Bobby did not come into the living room to ask to sleep in there. I didn't really notice at first until I looked up and saw that it was past midnight. I had been feeling like something was missing, and I realized it was him. I went up to his room and checked and he was sound asleep. I guessed he got over his fear. I was happy, but also a little disappointed that our pattern had been broken. I went back down into the living room. There was nothing on television that night, so I figured I'd go get a DVD out of the basement. We had a pretty huge selection of movies down there. I opened the door and walked down the stairs. About halfway down the stairs, I stopped when I saw movement and a very large outline of a person right by the downstairs entertainment center. And worse yet, it noticed me too. I froze as I realized that this had to be the dark man that Bobby had been seeing for weeks. This had to be the man responsible for the missing tools, and he was in the basement with me. I had never seen an actual intruder before. I didn't know how to react. I think he must have been really surprised to have been caught as well. We both just stood there and stared at each other for what seemed like forever. Then he moved toward me quickly. I broke out of whatever spell I was in and turned back up the stairs. The man had made it to the bottom of the steps before I made it out the door. I screamed out for my parents with the loudest voice I had ever mustered. I slammed the basement door and then ran up the stairs and pounded on my dad's bedroom door. I kept looking for the staircase, expecting the figure to bound up it at any moment. My mom opened the door though, and when I told her what happened, she pulled me in the room as my dad went to check on my brother and then the basement. The man got
got out of the house quickly enough. Bobby was extremely alarmed, although we didn't tell him there was an intruder. He quickly decided that his dark man had gotten into the house. He was unconsolable for quite a while, and I had to let him start sleeping in my room to calm him down. Although the man never came back, and Bobby never saw the figure again, it was months before he was able to calm down and feel comfortable alone again in the house. Number 3. The Alley I grew up in a city, Chicago to be accurate. I lived there until my early 20s. I guess one of the things I really liked about the city was that it never really slept. There were always people out and about, doing something, no matter what time it happened to be. And when I was 22, a friend of mine wanted me to watch his house in Kansas City for a few months while he was out of the country. I can't even tell you what a culture shock it was for me. I don't want anyone in Kansas City to think I'm talking down about their hometown. But to go from a city that never sleeps to a city that seemed to go to sleep promptly at 10. Well, it was strange as hell for me. I was the type of guy who really liked to be up and out at night. And yeah, there were businesses open in certain areas, but it rarely seemed to me like there were many people around. And occasionally, I would take myself for a walk throughout the city, and I would sometimes not run into a single person. I guess it was nice to not run into as many panhandlers, but I even began to miss that. I almost wanted to give some change to someone. It really didn't keep me from going on my walks though. I liked it. One night, I even got mistaken for a male prostitute and someone tried to pick me up. And that, that was a bit of an odd experience for me. I was out pretty late one night. I probably should have stayed in and played around on the internet, but I was getting stir crazy, so I had to get out and look around. I had to find something to do. It was nearly 2 o'clock in the morning, but I just really wanted to get out and get around. So I took a walk and I went to the downtown area. Like usual, it was really dead that night. For once I really didn't care though. I was able to get out and be with my thoughts. As I walked by a dark alley, I heard a noise and turned to see what it was. It was a natural response. But it definitely was not natural to see a struggle happening by a dumpster deep in the alley. I wasn't able to make out what I saw, but two people were fighting. It was so dark in the alley that I couldn't really make more out than just like they were shadows and not people fighting. But I was able to see one of the people thrust something into the stomach of the other person. The person who got hit stopped struggling, and then slumped onto the ground. I assumed the person was stabbed in the stomach, but I really wasn't sure. I was stunned, and too stunned to run off right away. And the bigger shadow figure, the one that had hit or stabbed the other one, turned and looked at me. Immediately, he began moving toward me, and very fast. I didn't stop to get a good look at him. I just turned and ran for my life. I took off down the street, back in the direction of the neighborhood I was house sitting in. When I got far enough down the street, I finally braved to look around to see if I was being followed. I was able to see a figure, off in the distance, where the entrance to the alley was. Again, I wasn't able to make him out, but he seemed to be watching me as I was leaving. I didn't hesitate again. I took off down the street, and I didn't calm down until I got home, and when I did, I called 911 and reported what happened, and when the police got there, they indeed found a man who had been stabbed. They took him to the hospital, where he unfortunately passed away. 
I only wish I was able to give more of a description than just a guy who looked like a big shadow. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. Now, how many of you are in shock at this moment? Three videos in seven days. It feels good to have the time to be able to do this, and I'll do my best to try and keep it up for all of you. If you'd like to read print versions of these stories, please check out the Killer Orange Cat subreddit in the link provided. You can also take a look around at the Killer Orange Cat merchandise store. My sister added some mugs on Teespring, and there is a link to them in the description. In the meantime, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please consider hitting the subscribe button below, or using the icon of Ichigo that will appear at the end of this closing. Feel free to leave me a comment to let me know what you think of the video and consider sharing it with someone you think might enjoy it. You can always follow Ichigo and myself on Facebook and Twitter, using the links in the description. If you have a story you like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please send it to the address provided in the description. My main requirement is that the story is original, meaning it has not yet been read on any other YouTube channel. And whatever you do, please, don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed because you never know where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.